I'm going to show you my uh, my proof here, the three things we want to get to. Okay. Uh, I will point out this is only one mark, and really you're just trying to get to you're just trying to get to part three. In fact, part three is the real question. Parts one and two are the exam setters saying, hey, we want to sort of give you a nudge in the right direction and not just leave you directionless, okay? Um, so there are lots of ways to go about this, but I'll show you my way. The key thing with part one is that the verb of the question, the verb of the question is, have a look at it. What do they ask you to do? Explain. We hardly ever ask you to explain in a mathematics exam. So you've got to use some words here. You must use words. If there are no words in what you've written for part one, uh, I'm doubtful that you would get a mark, even if there are lots of right things in your solution to part one. So here's my explanation. Okay, I'm looking at uh, Z2. That's this guy up here, and I'm comparing it to A. That's uh, this guy over here, okay? Just as a short note, you've got P, Q, and R, which are the points, and then you've got Z1, Z2, and A, which are the complex numbers representing your points, okay? So what I'm gonna say is, being that both uh, Z2 and A inhabit this triangle up here, I know, what kind of triangle is it? It's equilateral, right? So I'm gonna say since, huh, I'm using words, see? Since triangle OQR is equilateral. Oops, that's an L. Wait. Since it's equilateral, I can make an argument about each of the angles in it. Now remember, I am in radians land, right? So I can say in an equilateral triangle, each of its angles is pi on three radians. It's one of the nice things about using radians. Um, you don't have to think about 180, 60, 45, what is it? You just go pi divided by whatever you want it to be, okay? So the three angles, they all add up to pi, so pi on three each. Now, if that is the case, then I can say that OQ, that vector, in fact, I'm gonna put an arrow on that just to give me a visual cue that I'm treating it as a vector, is the same as thinking as o about OR and rotating it in what direction? What direction am I going in? That way? That's anti-clockwise, right? Which is the positive direction. Is same as rotating OR anti-clockwise by pi on three radians. I just explained that, right? So therefore I can say, hence, uh, OQ, do you remember? What's the way that I indicate it's a vector and not just like a length? Arrow. Yeah, I have that arrow on the top, right? And it's O to Q rather than Q to O because those are different vectors, right? Hence, OQ is formed by rotating which vector? Which vector am I basing it on? Oh, yeah. uh, now the vector I'm thinking about is O R, and I'm going to rotate that by pi on three, which is where W is going to come in. Okay, so I'll get to W in a second. It's formed by rotating O R um, by pi on three anti-clockwise. That direction is really important, and in your explanation, you've got to say it. Uh, one of the critical problems that students have as they work with vector questions, this is why I brought it out, is not accounting for direction, right? In a minute for part two, I'm gonna talk about going clockwise. And so my calculations are gonna be ever so slightly different, right? So just be watchful. Okay, now here's a reason. So I am going to provide an equation that tells me that, right? So O Q equals, now rotation of complex numbers and vectors is formed by what operation? It's multiplication, right? So I'm gonna go O, R times, now what's the complex number that will rotate me pi on three radians in the clockwise direction? And the answer is cos pi on three, plus I sine pi on three, I'm gonna write that. Do you see, and I, um, I mentioned this to a couple of you just now, right? Whenever you're doing geometric reasoning of any kind, you'll have an equation somewhere and your reason should basically be a verbal restatement of that equation, right? So the example I always give is that if you um, had co-interior angles on parallel lines, you might say something like alpha plus beta equals 180 degrees, right? Now your reasoning would be co-interior angles on parallel lines are supplementary. Okay. Now, often we see something like this. Maybe alpha is like the angle you actually want to find. So we kind of take a shortcut and we're like, oh, it's just that, right? But I don't, I don't write this because that has nothing to do with things adding together. And the left-hand side doesn't have co-interior angles on it. It's got one of the co-interior angles. So if I wrote this 
and said co-interior angles on parallel lines are supplementary, there is a mismatch between the equation I've written versus the reason I've provided. Can you see my second and third lines are basically saying the same thing in words, then in symbols. Do you see that? Does that make sense? So that's one of what makes um, the logic of it watertight. Okay, now I'm going to replace it with all, I'm pretty much done, right? This is the complex number Z2. Uh, that's A, so I've got these out of order, but that's W, right? And I, I think that's sufficient. Like you don't need to turn the W layer around, okay? Right, there's my explanation. I hope you're content with that. Now have a look. I need to get to this next one, Z1, Z2 equals A squared. I've got Z2 down my pocket. Now I just have to worry about Z1. Now I can do this in two different ways. I actually referred before uh, to talking about rotating in the clockwise direction. I couldn't talk about it that way. Alternatively, being that I just did part one, do you notice that I can, for part two, I can almost do part one all over again, right? Because OR, OR is OP rotated anti-clockwise by the same angle, it's done, done all over again, right? So anytime you've got geometric reasoning, if you've done some, try and reuse it, because then you don't have to say it all over again, right? So I can say, similarly, that's such a good word, right? <laughs> similarly, um, you know, I've got the same equilateral triangle down the bottom, in fact, they're congruent. So I can say, uh, oh, what have I got? OR is formed by rotating OP in the same way. Okay? So, because I've kind of um, laid that point, I'm going to go straight to the complex number four. So, the complex number representing o P, uh, OR sorry, is A. So, that's A over there. The complex number representing OP is Z1. And then that pi on 3 anti-clockwise rotation is going to be W. Yep. Okay, so what am I going to do with these? What's my next step? Anyone? Where am I going to go? I'm going to have to substitute some stuff into here, right? There's one more thing before I do that. Uh, I don't have Z1 to substitute in. I just have to tweak that a little bit. I'm going to divide both sides by W. And from here, it's somewhat trivial, isn't it, to get to Z1, Z2. I just, as, um, as it suggested, I'm just going to substitute them in. There's Z1, there's Z2. Uh, so, this is what I like. As required. Are you happy with that? 